Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 3rd of March. Hope you all had a great trading week and if you uh, find the videos that I provide every Sunday of use, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video content across all platforms if you can. Um, it's a free way to support the channel and uh, shows your appreciation. So. Uh, getting into the week ahead, and this is from uh, Trading Economics. And so in the upcoming week, investors will closely track the United States' January Labor Report and speeches by several Federal Reserve officials, including Fed Chair Powell's semi-annual monetary policy reports to Congress. Um, also, key U.S. indicators like the ISM Services PMI, jolts, job openings, factory orders, and foreign trade data will be under scrutiny internationally. The focus will be on the European Central Bank and the Bank of Canada interest rate decisions. That will be definitely important. Uh, both banks are actually expected to hold Hold rates, but um, it's really about the forthcoming um, rate cuts and when they are likely to happen. So uh, the market will get clues as to uh, what the uh, central bankers uh, are thinking. So um, where are we at now? Sorry. Uh, we've got interest rate decisions alongside inflation rates in Switzerland. Uh, GDP growth rates for Australia will also be monitored. Finally, trade data for major exporters such as Germany, Australia, China and Canada will be closely watched along with services PMIs for China. So fairly a lot going on um, uh, this week, especially in the United States. And uh, yeah, another busy week. So beginning of the month now. Uh, before we get into the uh, weekly analysis, just uh, I guess um, I've got a trade, some trade analysis on the euro Australian dollar. And this was a trade that I would entered into this week. And if you are in the members area, you'll be able to see uh, the analysis in the trading videos area. And if you click on uh, the 28th of February, our group call that we uh, have every Wednesday live group call uh, via Zoom. And if you go to about the one minute nine mark, um, you'll see that uh, this was the uh, Euro Australian dollar. And I was talking about the uh, potential for a stop hunt in this video. So uh, you can see the breakdown of the actual trade setup, if you remember there but in this video what i am going to do is just really kind of go over the main uh, the main uh, entry in terms of um you know where i got in and uh, how the trade has played out so far so um stop hunt did actually work out quite nice um i didn't enter on the hourly time frame but just for um, just for ease of understanding, I guess um, it's better that I go down to the hourly. So um, I was expecting a stop hunt to happen above this level, which it did happen. Now, uh, what I ended up doing was as soon as um, well, around about nine o'clock uh, this uh, say this morning, but uh, on Thursday morning, um, I entered into three positions or managed to get into three positions. So um, one was actually at the 1.6648 level. Then I set two pending orders, one at the 16671 and then another one at the 16692 area. So right at these highs. And the, uh, the hope is that Obviously, prices either go in my direction or I can get a better price if prices do end up pulling back and nobody knows how far they're going to pull back to. And then I'm looking at getting, uh, hopefully taking some positions off as prices go in my favor. Um, the stop losses on each trade are all at the same position, right, right there. And so um, on each position, what I'm looking for, the first two positions, um, I'm looking for at least a one-to-one -to, -one to get myself to at least some sort of break-even overall or at least a profitable position. Then what I'll do is I'll swing trade this last position. So as we um, go forward, you can see prices, uh, you know, obviously were, were coming up. And so triggered me into the 50% um, pending order. 
and also as well managed to trigger my final position 50%. Now at this point in time, it does feel, I'm used to it now, but it can feel uncomfortable because you know, you're thinking to yourself, well, prices are going against me. The, the thing with the fundamental analysis and applying fundamental analysis is understanding that um, if you're right about this trade and this is actually a bargain price, which I thought it was, I want it to be a buyer of the Australian dollar over the um, over the euro. And that was um, also as well, if you got access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet and you remember, um, you'll know, you'll note that I was uh, short, I had a short bias um, on the euro Australian dollar and that never changed as well. And that again was broken down in the members uh, video area. Um, and if you're right about the fundamentals, if I'm right about the fundamentals prices, even though they might pull back, they may not want to go too far above uh, this area. So um, that's the reason why I, I uh, try to enter into three positions if price will obviously allow that to happen. And as you can see, prices did get me into three positions. Now, at this point, I'm trying to take off at least a one to one uh, on this uh, on this third position. Right which ended up happening. So as it came down, yeah, as it came down, it basically my stop loss, um, sorry, my take profit was 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 around here at the 16643. So that position ended up being a winner. And then now I'm looking for at least a one to one on this second position. Yeah, so it didn't quite happen there. And then it happened right there. So that was the second position at a one to one. So now I am profitable. Actually, I was profitable before that um, because I tend to um, go a bit heavier and increase my position size as prices go against me. So um, now I'm actually profitable. Um, and so it's now about just swing trading uh, this uh, position, this Euro Australian position. And again, really from a fundamental perspective the reason why i'm looking to buy the australian dollar over the euro um, uh, over the euro is because the uh, rba uh, the reserve bank of australia are uh, looking to cut rates later than the uh, than the european central bank so that really should give it a bit of an advantage at certain levels and so um I was right this week on this trade and so far now this um, is going to be a trade that I will look to swing trade, uh, looking at daily targets, of course, and trying to maybe get, you know, um, prices to kind of maybe come down a bit further uh, around here. If I can just pull that out. Yeah. So prices to maybe come down to somewhere around uh, these lows, if not slightly lower. I'll just trail my stop on that one. So uh, nice trade uh, on that so far. Also, I'm in the New Zealand dollar, US dollar long. Um, I won't necessarily break that down this week, but uh, I have broken that down also as well in the members area video. And the 2nd of March uh, weekly fundamental um, and technical analysis video for the members, uh, I break down um, uh, the trades that I'm in also as well. And just to give a bit of a trade update as well from last week on the CAD uh, yen. So again, uh, this was from last week. So you can watch last week's breakdown and uh, and see what this whole scenario was again another stop hunt situation and I go down into the lower time frames and um, again same uh, principle and the same approach I'd entered into uh, the uh, market order here and I entered into another um, uh, trade at the 50% and also one at the 95% uh, now the 95% trade um, ended up being uh, profitable last week and you can again go and see that in last week's um, Sunday video analysis so it reached as we got triggered in here prices came down and then I was only in really two positions which was the market order and the um, and the actual 50% uh, retracement right and then this week we had price Again, come down and hit a nice one-to-one uh, -one trade, which was here, right? And that was on the uh, the Thursday. Uh, you know, I was asleep then, so it was nice to wake up to uh, some profit there on this trade. In fact, that wasn't where the one-to-one -one was. It was right there. So that would have been 
in the pullback entry sell and then uh, about a week later yeah Wednesday and then to Wednesday it took about a week to get there but ended up taking profit off there and now I'm just in this trade which is the original market order around the 110.98 and again looking for higher time frame uh, targets on this one and hopefully again I can swing trade this down with the fact that the Bank of Japan are going to be the uh, only central bank this year to hike rates and so uh, from a from a uh, currency uh, valuation perspective the yen uh, hopefully should want to um, you know uh, fall away and and and, uh, and appreciate over the Canadian dollar so that's really where I am uh, with the uh, the CAD yen and also as well the euro Aussies so both profitable trades running and also as well I have a couple of other trades that I got into uh, last week but um, I might go over those uh, next week regardless of whether they win or lose I'll go over at least one of them and so um, yeah that's really it for the trade analysis so let's get into the week ahead and the week ahead starting off on the um, dollar index and the dollar index this is a, this is an equally weighted uh, dollar index uh, with a, a, a calculation if you want to know this calculation then if you go to the YouTube channel if you scroll uh, to the trading one at the YouTube channel and then go to Forex strategy using the equally weighted index to identify the best Forex setups and pairs um, there's the uh, calculation on how to add that to your trading view charts and so um, this week for the dollar uh, I was just telling the members that I've been bullish uh, pretty much since the beginning of the year um, had, had some decent uh, dollar trades but now I think that the dollar may start to um, I guess start to sorry uh, yeah start to um, uh, maybe sell off a little bit I think and really really the, the main reason is because I think whatever's priced into the market in terms of rate hikes has been uh, and rate cuts sorry has been priced in and so um, in order for really prices to go much higher beyond this level and of course prices can go higher but for prices to really continue you know on its um, upward movement what would have to happen is for really you know signs of um, inflation uh, going higher as well as the economy uh, growing now from um, uh, Jerome Powell's perspective uh, he is uh, being quite hawkish so it says here's the Fed's power to double down on no rush to cut message. So, um, you know, set pieces include Fed testimony, China Congress and UK budget, ECB and Bank of Canada may keep interest rates unchanged. And so it says here the Federal Reserve Jerome Powell is expected to double down on his message that there is no rush to cut interest rates, especially after fresh inflation data showed that price pressures persist. So they need to get inflation down really to look to potentially um, cut rates. And it says here Powell is headed to Capitol Hill where he deliver his semi-annual monetary policy testimony to a House committee on Wednesday and the Senate panel on Thursday. The U.S. Central Bank chief and nearly all of his colleagues have said in recent weeks that they can afford to be patient in deciding when to cut rates given the underlying strength in the economy. The danger of moving too soon in cutting is that the job is not quite done and uh, that the really good readings we've had for the last six months somehow turn out to be or not to be true or a true indicator of where inflation is heading uh, Powell said in an interview with CBS 60 Minutes on February the 5th uh, earlier in the month so uh, or earlier last month and it says that cautious approach has been vindicated or validated in recent weeks by data showing inflation picked up last month but it's not likely to satisfy Democrats who are anxious about the path of rates uh, could affect the November presidential election and down ballot races. They're expected to uh, to press the Fed chief on why officials are keeping borrowing costs so high, risking damage to the economy 
when they've made so much progress on inflation. And um, in fact, earlier in the year, I was saying, um, I think one of one of the first videos I made this year was on the fact that the Federal Reserve are likely to cut rates this year, and it's really to do with the election cycle. And so, um, you know, politicians may be putting pressure on the Fed to actually uh, cut rates. So cut rate, uh, rate cuts are coming. So, uh, but at the moment, the CME FedWatch tool, uh, the probability of that rate uh, cut is priced in June. So you'll see here where it says May, top, top uh, left. Um, in May's um, announcement, there's still 81% of a no change. Uh, in June is when you start to see um, the uh, probability of an ease to 63.3%. And as that starts to increase, what you'll start to see is the dollar uh, look to um, devalue, right? And so I do think that although the dollar isn't an all-out sell here, I do think that the upside is likely limited. Um, and so... I am now looking for the potential for some short trades. I do think that um, the dollar is a bit expensive in this area. So I'm thinking that prices are likely to potentially pull back. Not too sure if it would do it this week. Hopefully it does, of course. But um, if it does, then I will uh, be um, a bit happier with that anyway. But overall, I think the dollar um, should want to pull back to some degree, or at least at the very least, uh, the upside uh, upside potential is likely to be um, to be capped. Um, one of the other um, data points that came out this week was that the um, U.S. manufacturing gauge drops as industry struggles for momentum. So ISM factory index declined 1.3 points in February, and new orders, productions, and employment measures decreased. So a measure of U.S. factory activity shrank at a faster pace in February as orders, production, and employment contracted, suggesting manufacturing is struggling for momentum. So it says here the latest figures are a setback for the nation's purchasing and supply management executives who have been optimistic that the U.S. manufacturing is on the cusp of expanding after being stuck in contraction territory since late 2022. So if we look at the, uh, you know, the manufacturing, uh, which is a, a forward-looking indicator as well of uh, of how the economy is doing, right? And so, um, again, if GDP, if you know, manufacturing is a component of GDP, and if manufacturing is struggling, then it hurts, um, you know, the, the GDP reading, right? And so. Um, I do think that potentially the tide is turning in terms of uh, dollar strength. Now, obviously, the most difficult thing is the timing. But uh, overall, looking at where we are, I do think that if prices do go higher, it shouldn't be much higher. And I do think that the path for now release resistance is probably to the downside as we start to now auction between um, a high and a low. And uh, traders will say, well, what is an auction? And really just an auction is uh, another word for it would be to kind of range between this high and this low potentially or maybe slightly higher in terms of that high and this low so this is where i do think that the, the dollar is likely to want to stay between in terms of where prices are likely to stay between so um for me i think the dollar is a bit on the expensive side opportunity to short of course um if the fed chair power comes out and is very hawkish then you may see a bit more upside but overall i think in the next uh month or two as we head closer to uh june i do think that the dollar's uh, strength is likely to to wane a little bit but it's not necessarily an all-out uh sell i think you can also buy on the dips as well if you do believe uh that the dollar is a bargain at certain demand zones and also as well not to forget that the data needs to support the narrative so um if the data does support later rate hikes meaning that you know data comes out and all of a sudden the fed uh start to you know maybe plan for a july cut rather than a june cut then in fact you will have a stronger dollar 
overall but it also depends and that could be you know work the other way right in terms of if data comes out and doesn't support uh, rate cuts uh, in june in fact it maybe brings it forward to may then you're likely to see the dollar actually sell off uh, a lot a lot more so data is still important data dependent and let's see what happens with the dollar but i think you know in in the coming weeks i think that the upside is capped for the dollar in terms of any kind of dollar strength uh, looking at the dollar, um, dollar yen and the dollar yen uh, this week, we did come up to this uh, supply zone right here where we've got that area and uh, we have reacted prices haven't necessarily, um, you know, moved to the upside. Uh, this week we did also have, um, I guess, a rumor uh, really start to circulate that the Bank of Japan could potentially start to uh high rates for the first time since i think 2007 uh in march so it's expected to really happen you know march april maybe latest in june and it says here the headline is the bank of japan risks roiling markets with traders underprepared for march so seven of 15 economists see a march policy shift as possible and swaps point to 34 percent chance of hike by march and 85 percent by april so um the you know, uh, the, the the closer we get to um, March, April, um, and the more likely it looks like the um, the Bank of Japan are going to hike rates, then you should really start to have prices move to the downside. Um, although, of course, in the short term, prices could move, you know, higher and you know clear out some of the uh, some of the liquidity, especially above that area as well. That's going to be a very nice level where you know above that one five two where there's going to be a lot of liquidity uh, above there. But um, overall, um, the closer we get to rate hikes, is the uh, hopefully the stronger the Japanese yen should become. So um, this pair is not necessarily one that I am very bullish on, but I think once the divergence starts to play out in terms of um, in terms of the dollar cutting rates and the Fed cutting rates and the Bank of Japan hiking rates, then what should happen is uh, you should really get a, tr um, a, uh, a situation where the dollar yen starts to uh, drop and uh, fall towards at least the 140 so you can prepare yourself for that which i am but not just yet and i think it's happening just 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 yet um so let's see what happens there uh dollar cad and the dollar cad this week you have a nice supply zone that has been tested um the dollar cad isn't necessarily a pair that i'm interested in buying or trading at the moment Although that's a nice area of demand, a wide area of demand at that. Um, I do think that within that wide area of demand, if I'm looking for any kind of trades, it'll be in, uh, it'd have to have the confluence of some sort of support and resistance. I do think that area is decent. You've probably got some intraday support in there as well. So if you are looking for buy trades, looking for pullbacks if you're looking for a trade right now then that's decent for a, uh, a sell trade in terms of buying the canadian dollar but ultimately um uh, i'm not really interested in taking uh, this pair but if you are a decent area to look for some short trades um currently looking at the pound dollar and the pound dollar has been really within this uh, this whole uh, range or auction uh, for actually quite a while so um, two uh, strong currencies and I think I do think that the British pound does have a bit of an edge um, again the, the, the main reason for the edge is that um, the Bank of England are looking to cut later than the Federal Reserve so it says here cuts to interest rates still some way off says Bank of England economist and so the Bank of England top economist has said he believes a cut to UK interest rates are still some way off uh, Hugh Pill 
um, the chief economist at the central bank also warned that the economy is currently weak and said policymakers should not feel a full sense of security if inflation falls below the 2% target rate in the coming months. Um, it says here, economists and banks have widely predicted that the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee could opt for its first cut since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic at the first in the first half of the year. However, Mr. Pill became the latest Bank of England rate setter to appear cautious about uh, potential future rate cuts. In my baseline scenario, the time for cutting rate bank rate remains some way off. And he says, I need to see more compelling evidence that the underlying persistent component of CPI, that's, um, consumer prices index inflation is being squeezed down to rates consistent with a lasting and sustainable achievement of the 2% inflation target before voting to lower bank rates. So until that starts to happen, um, he's going to be uh, quite hawkish. And so, um, you know, the, uh, the market, I think, is pricing in rate cuts for August. So whereas you will have maybe the, the, the market are pricing in a rate cut in June, and a uh, rate, sorry, a rate, yeah, rate cut in June and a rate cut in in, in August. Um, the the central bank that is cutting later is typically the one that you want to buy. So from that perspective, um, yeah, the the pound on pullbacks is likely to be or should be really the buy um, if you're trading. Uh, the interest rate uh, leading and lagging uh, trade idea. So any pullbacks there. And again, looking at from a demand zone perspective, yeah, probably back it back down into into that zone right there. In fact, probably down into there. If you are looking at uh, buying the dollar over the pound, then you are looking at any moves back up to that supply zone there before looking at getting uh, short pound yen and the pound yen i think now is looking decent for a potential sell not necessarily the best supply zone in the in the world but with the bank of japan really the only bank uh, looking at hiking rates then um, the yen should really be uh, the uh, the buy out of the two and so I do think that any pullbacks now into this zone, again, like I said, not necessarily the best uh, supply zone reason being because we haven't taken out any kind of demand yet, but any pullbacks into that area should be nice for a potential sell or if you're looking for stop hunts just above that. Um, if you are still looking to buy the, uh, the pounds, then probably from now or maybe a bit of a deeper pullback into that zone. And for extra confluence, you might want to wait for uh, an area where you have support and resistance within that area of demand as well. Uh, looking at the euro dollar, so the euro dollar this week, um, I think the euro is strengthening really just based off of some a bit of dollar weakness. And so um, because of the uh, recent uh, ISM data, Think you did have a move to the upside whether that's going to be sustained uh, or not is um is a tough one i mean I've, my bias is really to kind of um is to kind of still short the euro i'm not really keen on, on buying the euro at all but the euro could be a buy against the dollar um on a pullback if you start to see more dollar weakness so that's decent also as well if you are being if you do want to be a buyer of the euro i think anywhere in and around this uh, this uh, support and resistance and just below that area there is nice technically um if you are looking to buy the dollar over the euro then i would probably wait for something uh, around the 109s 10920s before looking at getting uh, short and you do also have a decent area of support and resistance on that daily time frame in and around there so where prices have been traded quite significantly so uh, that adds to again some sort of confluence if you are looking for short trades on the dollar my bias would still be although again i'm i'm, I'm uh, 
thinking that obviously the dollar can be a buy and a sell against the the euro i still think the dollar is likely to be a buy but um this week is going to definitely be a, uh, a pivotal week looking at the euro um euro yen and the euro yen i was in this last week as well uh, i actually got stopped out um uh, by about two or three pips but managed to re-enter on an intraday stop hunt and uh, get some of that money back. So um, still a little bit down on this um, on this overall trade idea, but um, let's see how this plays out. I'm in one position on this. So, um, but from a supply and demand perspective, again, it's really just understanding that I want to be a buyer of the yen um, at the moment. And I think the euro um, could, again, strengthen in the short term. But I think overall, the yen should really be the buy um, in terms of this should be really be a short on this currency pair. But let's see what happens here. If, if my other position, I've made some money on, on one position, I only managed to get in on two positions. Um, and if the uh, one that I'm swing trading at the moment gets stopped out, then I'll just wait for another opportunity to get in um, short on this because I do think that the euro yen uh, should want to roll over, hopefully. And let's see what happens there. If you do want to be a buyer, though, if you do want to be a buyer on this um, and buy the euro against the yen, then you've got an area of demand in and around here, which is decent. And also, as well, you've got some decent confluence when it comes to a level that has been traded support and resistance within that demand zone. So uh, quite nice there. Quite nice technically. Euro pound. Euro pound is a trade that I really want to get short on, but haven't had the opportunity to. Um, so let's see what happens this week. Uh, some supply zones I'm looking for. Uh, pullback. We've got, uh, again, a decent level of support there and resistance um so yeah i do think i want to be a buyer of the pound over the euro so any pullbacks that go higher that's where i want to be a uh, get short and buy the uh, the british pound or even better would be somewhere around this level so um let's see what happens there i think also as well this level is open to a bit of a stop hunt around that uh 0.858 level so um, again, I've just got my eye on this for sure. If you're looking at buy trades, though, if you're looking at buy trades and buying the euro, then really a pullback into that demand zone down at the bottom would be really the best opportunity. And I think as well uh, that is kind of backed up by the fact that you've got this my term is capture pain relief trade, uh, right? That area just below the uh, level is a it was known as a CPR uh, trade setup. So quite nice technically but fundamentally you really want to be buying the um well i can't tell you what to do but i want to be buying the uh, the british pounds so that's where my bias is uh, on this pair aussie dollar aussie dollar um you do have uh, some supply now i think the australian dollar is a buy overall and um i'm watching this trade i'm watching this pair um, simply just to uh, look for some buy trades. I'm not totally convinced just yet um, that the uh, Australian dollar is a buy against the uh, the US dollar, but I do have my my eye on this pair. And so um, again, any pullbacks if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar, uh, and if you're looking for sell trades, you're probably looking for back around here yes yeah, so any pullbacks up into maybe the highs of this area even a bit higher where you've got a fresher area of supply um, around the 0.66 round number and just above that is going to be nice technically for a short trade um, if it does happen this week but um, I think if there's going to be some dollar weakness this week then um, you know prices should want to move to the upside but let's see what happens also as well if prices does they, they, they do break through that uh, that area there, then you do have a decent area of demand at these lows. So 
think if it comes down here, that should be a decent pullback for a potential buy. And looking at gold, gold uh, flew on Friday, and that was really kind of due to, um, uh, again, uh, the US data. So gold rises to nine week high as US data reinforces rate cut bets. And so manufacturing gauge drops as in industry, uh, industry uh, struggles for momentum and bullion is on track for second consecutive weekly gain. And so gold rose to the highest in nine weeks as disappointing US factory data and a drop in consumer sentiment reinforced bets on the possibility of interest rate cuts later this year. Signs of a softening economy solidified expectations that the Federal Reserve will need to lower borrowing costs to help shore up the economy. Higher rates are typically negative for non-yielding bullion. So, you know, when you look at a price chart, and I've mentioned this several times, but whenever you see a price chart of gold and uh, you see yields, bond yields going higher, typically that has a negative effect on gold. Uh, main reason is because uh, money tends to flow into uh, assets that provide a yield, right? So um, gold, holding gold doesn't provide a yield. You want some easy money, right? And so I'd rather get paid, you know, 4% for holding government bonds is, is, is a mentality, not necessarily personally, but, um, you know, certain financial institutions tend to hold want to hold bond yields and get paid a yield um, rather than holding gold and waiting for just the, the price to appreciate. So from that perspective, um, gold kind of has struggled a bit, but you can see it's making its way higher as, uh, you know, the expectation of a uh, slowdown in the economy, in the US economy, um, starts to um, uh, come to fruition. If that does, then obviously gold should be the buy as we head into the economic uh, recession cycle or part of the cycle. So we've got some demand zones around here, here and uh, right there as well. So if you do want to be a buyer of gold, um, really you're looking for pullbacks. If you're looking to be a seller of gold, you do have quite a wide area of supply. Uh, technical, technically you do. Um, but from just looking at within that area and looking at levels, really the levels you're looking for and a point of reference would be uh, these two areas here. I don't think you've got anything else to kind of refer um and when I say refer is in, you know, support and resistance is on the daily time frame chart is just looking at where institutions have done business, right? So they definitely thought that this was expensive for gold. They thought it was expensive, you know, it spiked through, thought it was expensive again, expensive again. Now, will they think that gold is expensive here? Potentially, potentially not, who knows? But um, if not, then, then the next area to really kind of look for where price may be expensive is going to be all the way at these highs. So um, as a point of reference, looking at support and resistance, you know, it's either going to be here, prices may reverse, or prices may reverse around here um, if the market thinks that gold is expensive. If you're looking to be a buyer, though, then you're looking at buys down into these demand zones and potentially down at these lows. So as the market and uh, the U.S. economy starts to um, starts to cool, uh, and potentially head into the contraction phase um, and potential recession phase, uh, you, what should happen ultimately is actually gold should continue to uh, go higher because um, we're then entering into the rate cutting cycle. And when in the rate cutting cycle of um, of the uh, of the rate cutting cycle, we, uh, gold typically does do uh, and appreciate. So let's see what happens um, going forward over the next few months. So that's it for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the content and found it useful. I hope you have a great trading week and uh, speak to you all soon. Have a blessed week. All the best.